Hello, my friends. Let's talk about governments. And don't worry, I mean talking about political philosophy and not politics. In political science, trying to give a functional definition of government has always been a point of contention. As governmental structures have had multiple large-scale changes throughout human culture around the world, trying to place that definition under any particular kind of government has become largely dysfunctional. Trying to use religion or property ownership has become dysfunctional. Even using a particular regime is dysfunctional when taken in the context of Europe, where complete regime changes take place, yet retain the identity of the country that existed before. And the United States, where term limits almost make it such that no regime persists for any significant length of time, and the office of the president isn't a very good measure of that regime, and thus not a good measure of the change in the context of the governmental structure. So the challenge is that we need a definition that accounts for all governments throughout time that can be maintained with reverence to the virulent processes of change. In my experience, the most widely accepted definition of a government in political science is that which has a monopoly on violence in a given area. And this is problematic in a number of ways. First, it cannot account for small tribal governments of early man. Picture a small tribe of 50 people, and every adult in that group has equal decision-making power to what the tribe does. They hold votes and act, exercising the power of all 50 people. Let's also define power in this case as one's ability to act less the restriction by other actors. And in this case, there are no other tribes to be restrictive near our example tribe, and thus they have complete control over the power. However, there are no others around to exercise violence on. So how can such a tribe be considered a government when there is no violence to wield over other actors? With no violence to monopolize, there is no government. In spite of a small political contingent of people acting democratically and identifying their group independently. On a small scale, the definition demands the violent subjugation of an outgroup. This definition also creates a problem for a more modern conception of a nation or world government when taken in conjunction with revolution or terrorism. Under the monopoly on violence definition, a revolting group or a terrorist group rejects the idea that the government owns all the violence in their area and begins to act violently. If we maintain that a violence monopoly is the definition, then there are two problematic conclusions. First, since no group has a violence monopoly in a time of conflict, then no government actually exists in a time of revolution or war. And if that's the case, what if not a government is actually waging war? Second, if we don't want to assert that the government stops existing in times of conflict, it means that the mob becomes a legitimate government in whatever space they happen to occupy. This essentially reduces all governments into a mobocracy. So obviously none of these results seem to accurately represent or be represented by this definition. What we need then is a broader, more common sense definition that can cover all the possible conceptions of government throughout history or in the future. Here's what I propose. A government is a collection of people for the purpose of mutual action. In other words, it is when people gather together and make a decision for how to proceed as a group. It is a pooling of resources to better reach some end. Even if not every person gets their own end chosen, they pursue it as a class. Now a political scientist is going to slow my roll here and react that my definition is far too broad that it doesn't allow for distinguishing many kinds of groups as not being governments. And I would agree that it does exactly that. The more pressing concern for me, however, is the problem of exclusion. The violence monopoly definition excludes and destroys practical political actors that rightfully should be recognized as governments, such as the government resisting a revolution. 
violence monopoly definition requires creating many and multiple unique and distinct categories of actors and groups which hold nothing in common and yet have measurable political impact on supposedly actual governments. Thus, political models become overly complicated rather than more elegant and complex. It causes our political science to waste time measuring the rotation of the spheres rather than realizing how we rotate around a single, simple origin point. Rather than many unique entities, we have a single species of political actor. They are groups, all of which are rightfully called government, and the classes are determined by the means of their action and the ends to which they pursue. Thus, a nation is a government, as much as the revolutionary group is, as much as a profit-oriented company or an altruistic charity is, as much as a soccer club or a martial arts school is. It is an idea that is so simple and serene as to beg for rejection and complication by those who wish to be seen as though they know better and are thus more influential on political ends. Government is just when people come together to govern the people who gathered. It is a simple idea and leaves plenty of room to be built upon. So I'm confident that this definition can meet the needs of any politically scientific discussion. Thank you for watching, my friends. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Also, share the video with your friends if you think they might be interested. We are still a small channel in the YouTube community, so the only way we can grow is with your help. I have a new video coming out every Saturday, usually about video games or anime and the philosophy that influence them. So I hope you will join us next week. Thanks again for watching, and remember, Stay true.